First of all, I'd just like to thank everybody for joining today, the commission for hosting this wonderful celebration right now. Uh, 20 years ago today, I was in Bay City preparing to get married on March 20th. So tomorrow's my 20th anniversary and thank you all for coming to celebrate. <laughs> However, my wife's not here. I'm not sure how to take that. So um, anyway, my name is Scott Kaprosky and I'm here to provide an update on the current state of Lake Huron as it relates to the Salmonine up, uh, fish community objectives. And I will say that the folks that are identifying the prepared uh, portion of this slide did the lion's share of the work on just the mouthpiece here. So uh, uh, I want to especially thank Stephen James for all his work pulling this together. We had some staffing changes at our office last fall that resulted in, in uh, a departure to a state agency and he was leading this, this group and Stephen took the lead pulling together the dashboard indicators for us and, and, and a lot of the content that's in this presentation. So special thanks to Stephen James. Um, so the Salmonine objective for Lake Huron uh, is to establish a 2.4 kilogram, a million kilogram annual yield with lake trout being the dominant species and an adramus species having a prominent role. Um, <clears throat> As the Lake Huron dashboard indicators are being developed for this FCO total yield, along with the proportional harvest of lake trout and the introduced salmonas will be reflected on the dashboard. And then since it's the state of Lake Huron, uh, this presentation is going to touch briefly on lake-wide yield, lake-wide stocking, uh, the status of lake trout, and then the status of introduced salmonids. So lake-wide yield, this graph on the left reflects the fish community uh, objective for yield of 2.4 million kilograms annually. Um, the blue line is the, the yield through time. The red hash line is the previous reporting period of 2011 to 2017. And the current uh, reporting period is this red line. So <clears throat> you can see that uh, our yield, total yield has gone down a little bit uh, from the previous reporting period. But the graph on the right reflects the lake trout yield, and lake trout are a dominant uh, portion of the salmonid yield in Lake Huron. And this is all basins, North Channel and Georgian Bay included. So really the take home points is, is uh, we've not come close to even achieving the FCO when contemplated in 1995. Uh, harvest has been relatively stable, uh, following specifically following the collapse of Vale Wipe. You can see Chinook salmon comprised a majority of the, of the yield prior to 2005 and lake trout are the dominant species uh, from a harvest perspective. So lake ride stocking again comparing uh, the, the 2011 uh, to 2017 the current stocking period we've seen about a 35 percent reduction in total stocking but this is really driven by a reduction in lake trout stocking specifically in the main basin. Ontario stopped uh, stocking the main basin in 2014 and we saw some stocking reductions in U.S. waters in 2018. Um, <clears throat> for the introduced salmonids, the overall stocking numbers did not change substantially since the last reporting period. However, the species that are stocked have changed, so we see more of a presence of Atlantic salmon and coho salmon in this little uh, this part of the area chart. We'll have a little bit more of that on that later. We'll touch on that later. So I'm going to just real quickly flip through a few slides related to the status of lake trout and just to orient everybody, there's four main basins that, that lake trout data is uh, assembled on. So there's a line that goes from Alpino to the to Tobomori area, the tip of the Bruce Peninsula. That reflects the northern main basin uh, population or data below that line, the southern main basin. Then we have Georgian Bay and the North, North Channel as well. So just as we're stepping through this, so you're familiar with where we're at on, on the lake with respect to the data being presented. So the total lake trout yield, again, um, the plot on the left reflects the total salmonine yield, which was presented earlier, and the plot on the right uh, specific, specifically lists the lake trout yield across uh, Lake Huron. Um, <clears throat> when comparing lake trout yield with the current uh, reporting period to the previous reporting period, there's about a 10% reduction in total yield of lake trout but they still continue to dominate the harvest of all salmonids, but again, about 84%. In 2020, recreational yield, that's this little area right here, uh, um, <clears throat> went up as one of the top two years of rec yield of lake trout. This could be a, a, a product of the pandemic itself, so people were looking for some social distancing opportunities, uh, maybe more fishing, but we also saw a decline in commercial yield in, in that year as, as well. 
but commercial yield is still an important uh, important harvest component of lake trout and commercial fisheries both in the United States and Canada rely on lake trout harvest opportunities within within the basin. So proportionally we've, we've surpassed the FCO objective for lake trout being the dominant species relative to the other introduced salmonids. Uh, but this is primarily um, uh, attributed to the substantial decline in Chinooks in the earlier time series. So as you can see here, Chinook were the dominant species when the FCO was contemplated in 1995 from a yield perspective. So in the main basin of Lake Huron, uh, we have statistical catch at age models that provide updates to the status of lake trout populations within uh, the main basin. One of the model outputs yeah, I'm sorry. One of the model outputs we have is uh, the total is the biomass, and in these charts you see northern Lake Huron and southern Lake Huron. The blue line reflects uh, total biomass. The red line, or the orange line, excuse me, reflects uh, uh, wild fish biomass. Um, and you can see overall biomass has increased across the main basin. However, there's a little bit difference uh, when you compare the north versus the south. So the, the this red line here reflects the previous reporting period to the current reporting period in northern Lake Huron. You can see the biomass is relatively stable, but certainly a significant increase in wild biomass in, in, um, in northern Lake Huron. Looking at southern Lake Huron, you can see a decrease in total biomass uh, between the two reporting periods um, and slightly trending downward, maybe stable over the last 10 years of wild fish biomass. And this really shouldn't be surprising, particularly because this, this, the recruitment in the southern main basin relies on stocking recruit, uh, wild fish recruitment rather than stocking recruitment. There's still a little bit of recruitment up in the north uh, from stock, stocking activities, but, but generally speaking, most of the recruitment in Lake Huron is of, of uh, wild production. So when looking specifically at commercial fishing effort, there's been a steady decline over the past 10 years in both the north and the south. This is likely a, pro uh, a product of the changing ecosystems and, and declining whitefish uh, stocks, but lake trout continue to be and have been an important commercial uh, species, especially in the north. From a basin-wide perspective, most of lake trout are of wild origin. Origin In southern Lake Huron, which is this data plot over here, over 80% of the fish that are captured in commercial fisheries are of wild origin. Transitioning up back up to the north, this reflects the uh, the northern uh, commercial fishing effort and yield, uh, broken down by Canada and the United States. Um, and in the northern Lake Huron, stocking has continued again at a lower level than what historically has been done across the main basin. But stocking, uh, but recruitment appears to be influenced more by wild fish production rather than the stocking recruitment. In U.S. waters, lake trout comprise, wild lake trout comprise about 50 to 60 percent of, of the fish harvested by commercial fisheries, whereas in Canada they're about 80 percent, uh, which is a similar trend that we saw in southern Maine Basin. So wild fish are having um, a significant uh, um, contribution towards commercial fisheries. So switching next to lake-wide comparison of gillnet uh, yield per effort. Um, Despite declining commercial fishing and effort both in the north and the south, as reflected in the previous plot, there continues to be an increasing trend in the catch rates of lake trout across gillnet fisheries. Yields per, per effort is likely confounded by ecological changes and changes in target species over time, and this should not uh, this increasing uh, yield per effort should not uh, be reflected as an increase in abundance necessarily. Within Michigan waters, uh, the state of Michigan has been conducting spring, uh, spring gillnet surveys that go back to the early 70s. Uh, Chippewa Auto Resource, Resource Authority participated in some of these surveys uh, in the northern part of the lake from 1991 to 2008. Um, and the thing that uh, I was told to point out here is just the adult CPE. You can see this black line is adult uh, catch per unit effort throughout the time series. Um, it's declined, and there's not a line here, but uh, 2018 is about right here. So this is the previous reporting period, the current reporting period. There is a decline in adult CPE across uh, the two reporting periods, about a 15% reduction. And then uh, looking at the juvenile information, which this, ha this dotted line here is all juvenile fish. This hash, larger hash mark line reflects the wild uh, juvenile fish. Um, if you kind of squint your eyes, there's, there's no precipitous change between one period and the next, although the more recent series, it's a little bit more variable. 
Um, again, we had a, a year that data was not collected due to COVID. But upon reflecting of this, of, of this data set, um, one, one um, potential target that potentially could be looked at as it relates to how lake trout stocks are doing is looking at the catch of lake trout 55 millimeters or larger between ages four to eight. So kind of like in this area. So if, if that catch is high, that indicates you know, some positive things and related to lake trout population but also having a, a contribution of juvenile fish that at 20% or greater uh, in this time series would be indicate uh, positive things for lake trout stocks as well. And of those juvenile fish, maybe 50% or more would be of wild origin as management targets. So shifting over to the east side of the lake, um, Ontario conducts a, a variety of offshore index netting. They have four locations that are sampled, Southern Lake Huron, Central Lake, here on Southern Georgia Bay in the North Channel. Um, <clears throat> the plots in these right here, again, this is uh, the central main basin, the southern main basin, and this is the North Channel in Georgian Bay. But they reflect the geometric mean of catch per 24 hours. There is a difference in scale here, so the scale is much larger, the catch rates are much larger in Georgian Bay in the North Channel. Um, <clears throat> and then to quickly summarize this, relative abundance of of lake trout is variable on Ontario waters. It's pretty low on the main basin, uh, slightly higher in the North Channel and Georgian Bay, but those, both these areas are still stocked um, uh, by, by Ontario. They do have a re rehabilitation plan for lake trout that targets about eight fish per, per, uh, per net, and they're below target in both units, but there is a, an increasing, uh, one of their highest catch rates seen observed in the North Channel this more recently. So, Again, things are looking, uh, trending in a positive direction. Um, related to the, the wild lake trout percentage in Ontario catches, you can see in their main basin, which are these top two lines, they're very high proportionally, so 50 to 80% of their catches of wild origin. Again, not surprising given some of the things we've observed in main basin lake here on. And then in the North Channel and George Bay, although at a lower level, they still have wild fish that are observed in, in their offshore index netting. So next we're gonna transition quickly to the uh, inter introduced salmon on it. Um, again, this plot reflects stocking across Lake Huron for the introduced salmon excluding lake trout. Lake trout are not part of this. When comparing stocking rates between the two time periods, again, the 2011 uh, state of lake versus to 2011 to 2017 state of lake, compared to the 2018 to 2022 state of lake, um, <clears throat> rainbow, uh, there, there is a decline in that, most notably by rainbow trout, which is the blue area of this plot. And that was another product of the pandemic. So gametes were not able to be collected in, in 2000, 2020, which resulted in fewer fish being stocked in, in 2021. So outside of the rainbow trout reductions, brown trout stocking also decreased by nearly 20% during the state of the lake, but were really replaced by other other species such as Atlantic salmon and coho, which are the yellow and uh, green areas of this of this area plot right here. So pivoting to the yield of the introduced salmonids, we saw this earlier. This this is uh, the yield. The top left re reflects the total yield of the introduced salmonids going back to 85 um, during this reporting period. Total yield did decline by about 25%, which again, you can see those two lines reflect that. Uh, the top right is total uh, yield of the introduced salmonids, excluding Chinook salmon. So if you look at, at that yield, there's been a slight increase in this current reporting period of primarily Atlantic salmon, coho, and rainbow trout is the bigger driver. But commercial yield is, is uh, excuse me, Chinook yield is still is still pretty high and it's really driven by a red commercial uh, yield in the northern part of the lake. So Ontario does not have a, a similar creel program as does Michigan, so trying to get a, a, a good measure of creel surveys in Ontario waters is, is difficult. They have a few surveys that they, um, or a few tournaments they look at, uh, some gamete collection areas that try to determine um, what the percentages of wild versus uh, hatchery origin fish, but throughout Ontario waters, uh, their fisheries are largely su uh, supported by natural reproduction, and they supplemental stock in order to ensure those fishing opportunities. 
So I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but you can see the clip rates here have been increasing at, at uh, Port Albert. This is likely a product of, of drifting uh, rainbow trout from Michigan waters because Ontario doesn't clip uh, uh, rainbow trout. And then more recently at this Owen, um, Owen Sound salmon tournament, all the, all the fish were, were unclipped uh, Chinook that were harvested. So we kind of uh, will pivot to the U.S. recreational harvest as, as the uh, measure of sal salmonine harvest across the basin for the state of the lake. Um, if you take out Chinook salmon, again, uh, Chinook is, uh, including Chinook, we've seen a decline in salmonine, introduced salmonine harvest across this reporting period. But if you take that out, we've seen, uh, we've seen an increase as depicted earlier in, in introduced salmonine harvest across the state of the lake. Um, we're seeing certainly a more diverse, diver, diversified fishery. So earlier in the time series, green being the Chinook salmon dominated this. We're seeing some of the other in, um, uh, introduced salmonids uh, becoming more prevalent in recreational fisheries. And you can see here stocking rates for Atlantic and Coho have both gone, gone up in this current reporting period, as has their harvest opportunity. And at least in U.S. waters, recreational uh, effort has been pretty consistent going back to about 2005. Uh, across the basins. So in summary, um, are the fish community objectives for salmony being achieved? Um, for, for the yield, no, we're well below that. We're about 444,000 um, um, fish were yielded, uh, harvested in this cycle versus the 2.4 um, million kilograms per year. So we're well, we're well below that yield target for the Salmonine F FCO. However, do lake trout dominate that? They are the dominant source of harvest right now across all basins. Lake trout populations continue, continue to demonstrate varying levels of progress toward rehabilitation. It's evident in, in both uh, the main basin and North Channel and Georgian Bay, albeit at lower levels in Georgian Bay and the North Channel. Uh, fishery expectations might need to be tempered as recruitment shifts from stocking production to wild production. And as always, sea lamper control and predator-prey dynamics re remain priorities for lake trout. <clears throat> Related to the introduced salmonids, Chinook abundance has been stable, but at a much lower level than it has been historically. Rainbow trout, Atlantic salmon, and coho are critically important to the recreational angling communities out there. By changes in prey fish communities or lower trophic uh, changes that are occurring. And then sea lamper control remains a priority as well. Um, so are the 1995 FCOs as contemplated by the Lake Committee uh, attainable moving forward? When you think about that, uh, Chinook harvest in, 80, in 1995 was about 850,000 kilograms per year. We're, we're down closer to 200,000. Um, so it's likely with that collapse of Chinook not attainable moving forward. And with that, although he couldn't be here, Stephen James had a successful trip last week out in Georgian Bay. That's a nice lake trout he caught in Georgian Bay. So I want to thank Stephen for all of his work and the other co-authors in this presentation as well. So. Thanks, Scott.